Hey there, and welcome to Ode to a Mockingbird, a sleep podcast where you'll hear cherished classics served up with laid-back southern charm. I'm your host, Jake Phillips, and I'm looking forward to spending the next few minutes together. Now sit back and relax. Hey there, welcome to Ode to a Mockingbird, where we read classic literature to go to sleep to. I'm Jake. On this episode, we'll be reading Walt Whitman from Leaves of Grass. I hear America singing. I hear America singing, the varied carols I hear, those of mechanics, each one singing his as it should be, blithe and strong, the carpenter singing his as he measures his plank or beam, the mason singing his as he makes ready for work or leaves off work, the boatman singing what belongs to him in his boat, the deckhand singing on the steamboat deck. The shoemaker singing as he sits on his bench. The hatter singing as he stands. The woodcutter's song. The plowboy's on his way in the morning or at noon intermission or at sundown. The delicious singing of the mother or of the young wife at work or of the girl sewing or washing. Each singing what belongs to him or her and to none else. The day what belongs to the day. At night, the party of young fellows, robust, friendly, singing with open mouths their strong, melodious songs. When I read the book, the biography famous, and is this then, said I, what the author calls a man's life? And so will someone, when I am dead and gone, write my life? As if any man really knew aught of my life. Why, even I myself, I often think, know little or nothing of my real life. Only a few hints. A few diffused, faint clues and indirections I seek for my own use to trace out here. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath echoes, ripples, buzzed whispers, love root, silk thread, crotch and vine, my respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, 
and of the shore and dark colored sea rocks and of hay in the barn. The sound of the belched words of my voice loosed to the eddies of the wind. A few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms, the play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone or in the rush of the streets or along the fields and hillsides, the feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. You see, I resign myself to you also. I guess what you mean. I behold from the beach your crooked inviting fingers. I believe you refuse to go back without feeling of me. You must have a turn together. I undress, hurry me out of the sight of the land, cushion me soft, rock me in billowy drowse, dash me with amorous wet. I can repay you. Sea of stretched ground swells. Sea of breathing broad and convulsive breaths. Sea of the brine of life and of unshoveled yet always ready graves. Howler and scooper of storms. Capricious and dainty sea. I am integral with you. I too am of one phase and of all phases. Partaker of influx and efflux I. Extoller of hate and conciliation. Extoller of Amy's and those that sleep in each other's arms. I am he attesting sympathy. Shall I make my list of things in the house and skip the house that supports them? I am not the poet of goodness only. I do not decline to be the poet of wickedness also. What blurt is this about virtue and about vice? Evil propels me, and reform of evil propels me. I stand indifferent. My gate is no fault finders or rejecters gate. I moisten the roots of all that has grown. Did you fear some scrofula out of the unflagging pregnancy? Did you guess the celestial laws are yet to be worked over and rectified? I find one side a balance and the antipodal side a balance, soft doctrine as steady help as stable doctrine. Thoughts and deeds of the present are rouse an early start. This minute that comes to me over the past decillions, there is no better than it and now. What behaved well in the past or behaves well today is not such a wonder. The wonder is always and always how there can be a mean man or an infidel. Far hence amid an isle of wondrous beauty, crouching over a grave, an ancient sorrowful mother, once a queen, now lean and tattered, seated on the ground, her old white hair drooping disheveled round her shoulders, at her feet fallen an unusual royal harp, long silent, she too long silent, mourning her shrouded hope and air. Of all the earth, her heart most full of sorrow because most full of love. 
yet a word, ancient mother. You need not crouch there longer on the cold ground with forehead between your knees. Oh, you need not sit there, veiled in your old white hair so disheveled, for now you know the one you mourn is not in that grave. It was an illusion. The son you love was not really dead. The Lord is not dead. He is risen again, young and strong in another country. Even while you wept there by your fallen heart, by your grave, what you wept for was translated, passed from the grave. The winds favored and the sea sailed it, and now with rosy and new blood moves today in a new country. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But, oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills, for you bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you the shores are crowding, for you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain, Dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor's ship comes in with object one. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I with mournful tread walk the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, and the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourned, and yet shall mourn with ever-returning spring. Ever-returning spring, trinity sure to me you bring, lilac blooming perennial and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. O oh, powerful western fallen star, O oh, shades of night, O oh, moody, tearful night, O oh, great star disappeared, O oh, the black murk that hides the star, O oh, cruel hands that hold me powerless, O oh, helpless soul of me, O oh, harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. 
In the dooryard fronting an old farmhouse, near the whitewashed palings, stands the lilac bush tall growing, with heart-shaped leaves of rich green, with many a pointed blossom rising delicate, with the perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle, and from this bush in the dooryard, with delicate colored blossoms and heart-shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. In the swamp, in secluded recesses, a shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. Solitary the thrush, the hermit withdrawn to himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Song of the bleeding throat, death's outlet, song of life, for well, dear brother, I know, if thou wast not granted to sing, thou wouldst surely die. Over the breast of the spring, the land amid cities, amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris amid the grass and the fields each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass, passing the yellow-speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark brown fields uprisen, passing the apple tree blows of white and pink in the orchards, carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave, night and day journeys a coffin, coffin that passes through lanes and streets, through day and night, with the great cloud darkening the land, with the pomp of the in-looped flags, with the cities draped in black, with the show of the states themselves as of crepe-veiled women standing, with processions long and winding, and the flambeaux of the night, with the countless torches lit, with the silent sea of faces and the unbared heads, with the waiting depot, the arriving coffin and the somber faces, with dirges through the night, with a thousand voices rising, strong and solemn, with all the mournful voices of the dirges poured around the coffin, the dim-lit churches and the shuddering organs, where amid these you journey, with the tolling, tolling bells' perpetual clang. Here, coffin that slowly passes, I give you my sprig of lilac. Long, too long, America, traveling roads all even and peaceful, you learn from joys and prosperity only. But now, ah, now, to learn from crises of anguish, advancing, grappling with direst fate and recoiling not, and now to conceive and show to the world what your children in mass really are. For who except myself has yet received what your children in mass really are? A sight in camp in the daybreak, gray and dim, as from my tent I emerge so early sleepless. As slow I walk in the cool, fresh air, the path nearby the hospital tent. Three forms I see on stretchers lying, brought out there, untended, lying. Over each the blanket spread, ample brownish woolen blanket, gray and heavy blanket, folding, covering all. Curious I halt and silent stand, then with light fingers I from the face of the nearest the first just lift the blanket. Who are you, you elderly man, so gaunt and grim, with well-grayed hair and flesh all sunken about the eyes? Who are you, my dear comrade? Then to the second I step. And who are you, my child and darling? Who are you, sweet boy, with cheeks yet blooming? Then to the third, 
a face nor child nor old, very calm as of beautiful yellow-white ivory. Young man, I think I know you. I think this face is the face of the Christ himself, dead and divine and brother of all, and here again he lies. O oh me, O oh life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, of myself forever reproaching myself, for who more foolish than I, and who more faithless, of eyes that vainly crave the light, of the objects mean, of the struggle ever renewed, of the poor results of all, of the plodding and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless years of the rest, with the rest me intertwined, the question, O oh me, so sad, recurring, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists, and identify, and identity, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. You've been listening to Ode to a Mockingbird, a sleep podcast. I'm your host, Jake Phillips, and it's been a real privilege to be able to spend some time with you. Please do subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend if you're willing and able. And I look forward to meeting up with you again real soon. Until next time.